Okay, this is it, everybody. Section 8.3, you finally made it to the end, so I'll try to make it sweet and simple. So, standard form and trigonometric form, this is what we've done in the first two sections. So, I'm just going to kind of quickly review this for some of you that maybe haven't watched any of this before. Um, with the standard form, just know that this real one is your x value. The imaginary one is your y value. So, if I graph this as 1 this way, negative root 3 down, you know that this is 2. Um, your radius ends up being 2 either through a special triangle scenario or your distance formula scenario. And then when you go through and set this up, so the trigonometric form of like this complex or standard form situation, um, you just need to find that angle. So what would this angle be? So whether you set it up this way or use like uh, tangent, it doesn't really matter. All I know that's 60 degrees right there. So from home base, it's actually 300. I need to know my radius, so z equals my radius or my modulus, my distance is 2. Cosine of the angle from home base is 300 degrees plus I sine 300. And that would be your trigonometric form for this um, example. And this is shorthand, I didn't really do this shorthand before. Um, this is another way to write it. So I guess for some of you that do that, uh, cosine and sine, uh, cosine I sine, it's the idea that they use the same angle. It's just shorthand so you don't have to write it all out. Okay? So find the product of each. So what you guys need to do now is you're going to need to find your salmon sheet. And on your salmon sheet, you're going to make uh, life a lot easier for yourselves if you uh, find this. So there's um, complex numbers and trig form. It's the bottom right corner of your salmon sheet. And the top one of the three has Z1 times Z2. So if you have two trigonometric forms multiplied together, you're going to have a formula on here that basically tells you, so here's what it looks like, Z1, Z2 equals. And it's going to be, I should maybe do this in a different color, R1, R2 is the, la, the one and only time I'm writing this out. Cosine of theta1 plus theta2 plus I sine theta 1 plus theta 2. If you notice, it's not too complicated, even though it looks kind of scary. You just need to figure out what's R1, R2. I'm going to say that this is your first one. This guy's your second one. What's R1? All right. So I'm going to plug all of this in. And basically, you're just going to say R1 times R2. All right. R1 times R2, 3 times 7 is 21. So Z1, Z2, the product of them is 21. All right. And then inside, cosine of the two angles added together. Well, what's 40 plus 75? Okay, it's 115 degrees. Plus I sine is the same thing. That simple. If you can recognize that you're multiplying two of them together, you just do that every time. So likewise on the bottom one, okay, 9 times 4. I'm not even going to write the formula down. I'm not even going to do much of anything. I'm just writing it down. So 36 cosine of... 35 and 52 added together, 87 degrees. Same thing with sine. All right? And just in case you missed it before, you could shorthand these things. You could write cosine, or 36 cosine I sine, 87 as shorthand. You do not need both, just one or the other. It doesn't matter how you write it. I'll figure it out. So that is multiplying them. That's the product of two of them. Okay. If you look at the next formula on your salmon sheet, you're going to end up having a quotient one. All right. Notice you're dividing two trig functions now. All right. So on your salmon sheet, you have z1 over z2 equals, and then you end up dividing r1 over r2. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And then in parentheses, what's different? It's cosine of theta1 minus theta2. Essentially, you subtract them now. Don't forget your I sine of theta 1 minus theta 2. It's kind of like your exponential rules. All right? So basically, now that you're dividing them, you're going to end up subtracting the angle. So it's really that simple. 24 over 4, your R1 over R2, that's going to end up being what? 6. And then in parentheses, you're going to have cosine of top angle minus bottom angle. 64 minus 16 is 48 plus I sine of also 48. So that's the first one. And then the second one, I'll just keep it in blue. 36 over 12 is 3 
cosine of 98 minus 47, even if they're weird numbers, just subtract them out. And you end up getting 3 times cosine 51 plus I sine 51. All right, so that's your quotient. That's two-thirds of the section right there. All right, so what happens if I give you something like this? Now I'm still finding the product of two complex numbers, correct? So what, notice how easy that was to do that? Instead of actually foiling this out, not saying that you can't, you could foil it out, you could change it to trigonometric forms as well if you wanted to. So I'm going to say that this is Z1 and this is Z2. And all you got to do is be able to figure out um, so Z1's graph, where would we be? 1 to the right, root 3 up. 1 to the right, root 3 up. This has to be 2, so that's 60 degrees. And you know that the radius is 2. So I actually could write Z1 as the radius is 2, cosine of my argument, my angle is 60 degrees. All right. And then my second one. I'm going to say Z2. This graph is root 3 left, 1 up. Oh, I just put that right in the middle of my picture. Okay, root 3 left, 1 up. All right, so root 3 left, 1 up. That has to be a 30 degree angle there. So my argument would actually be 150 degrees. This is still R is 2. So Z2, if I'm going to write my trigonometric form, R is 2. It's cosine of 150 plus I sine of 150 degrees. Okay, so now if you're actually going to multiply these two things together, Z1 times Z2, what do you end up getting? All right, you just got to multiply your R's together. 2 times 2 is 4. And then what do you do with the angles when you are multiplying? You add them. So it's cosine 210 plus I sine of 210. And that's just using your rules to your advantage. You don't even have to remember FOIL or multiplying a whole bunch of i's together, a whole bunch of radicals together, you can do it this way. Now you could change this to your, um, going back to standard form, you could multiply this out um, and just to check and make sure that you know exactly what's going on um, if you wanted to. And you could FOIL this out, but I'm not going to necessarily waste that time. I just want to show you how that all works. All right. All right, I'll give you uh, 20 bucks if you know how to pronounce this name off the top of your head. I believe it's Dumois. I believe is how you actually pronounce it. Um, but basically, this guy with entirely too much free time decided to figure out how to take powers to these complex numbers. Okay? This will be the very last uh, formula on your formula sheet. All right? And that's where you need to kind of gather that information to do this. So this formula, I believe, is on your salmon sheet. It looks something like that. All right? And all this is is... Um, whenever we take anything to some power, so for instance, the n in this problem is to the fifth. You're going to end up just taking that 5 and giving it to the power of your r, and then the n ends up multiplying to each angle. Okay? So if this is my original trigonometric form, it's going to end up turning it into this uh, formula says that we go 2 to the fifth cosine of 30 times 5 plus I sine of 30 times 5. Now, how does that change my whole problem? 2 to the fifth is 32, and then it ends up being cosine of 150 plus I sine of 150. And that's using Dumois' theorem to your advantage. So that's just taking the power to it. And these, like I said, these formulas are right in your formula sheet, so it's not too bad at all. Um, the huge advantage is I don't think you'd want to sit here and multiply 1 plus i together 10 times, uh, foil it out, and then multiply another one or using Pascal's triangle or anything like that because it would take absolutely forever and you would probably just quit on me. So instead of doing that, can we write this guy in trigonometric form? Because use the Moss um, theorem, it has to be in trigonometric form. So if you actually think about, okay, I go 1 to the right and 1 up, 1 to the right, 1 up, do you guys know what this guy is? You should recognize it as the square root of 2, a 1, 1 square root of 2. That means your reference angle is 45 degrees. All right? And if you can recognize that, I now can write this in trigonometric form. So it's going to end up being square root of 2, parenthesis, and you'll get cosine 45 degrees plus I sine of 45 degrees. 
and I'm going to take all of this now still to the tenth power. Now why is this nice? Because now I can take that ten and put it out front. That didn't write. Okay. And I end up going the square root of two to the tenth power. And then I just multiply the ten to the, each angle. So I'll end up inside now, go cosine forty-five times ten plus I sine forty-five times ten. So what is root two times ten ends up being 32 and then I have what cosine 450 plus I sine of 450 all right and what's gonna end up happening if you I want you to actually find that value we got to go one step farther and actually solve can we actually get my real and imaginary number so 450 degrees where does that put us one full circles 360 90 more that puts us straight up coordinate point zero one so what is the cosine straight up 32 cosine straight up is zero plus I times the sine straight up is one because the X value at that point is zero and the Y value at that point is one so I end up having to distribute this 32 obviously anything times zero zero or so that's not a problem then we just end up with 32 I, which makes sense to me because all you got to do is just go straight up, which is your y value, your imaginary value, and the distance is 32, which is what we found right here. So that is taking a very quote unquote difficult scenario using your trig equation to your advantage and then using DuBois theorem to solve it and end up getting a pretty easy answer. Okay, so let's do the same thing root 3 plus i to the fourth power. All right. So if I end up drawing this out, root 3 is the x, my y is 1. Root 3 is the x, the y is 1, that makes that 2. And I know that my theta has to be 30 degrees because it's across from the 1. So since my r is 2, my theta is 30, I now can write this guy in a trigonometric form just like before. So I'm going to end up having 2 is my r. Cosine 30 plus I sine of 30. And then all of that is still going to be to the fourth power. And using DeMoss theorem, we end up saying 2 to the fourth. And then it's cosine 30 times 4 plus I sine of 30 times 4. And end up getting 16 cosine of 120 degrees plus I sine 120 and now you could solve you could go about and solve this to do that I need to draw okay where's 120 degrees right there that makes that 60 degrees so that makes this what the square root of 3 up that makes that a 2 and that's 1 to the left so cosine at 120 is the adjacent over hypotenuse so negative 1 half plus I times root 3 over 2 and then I just need to multiply that 16 through so my actual answer would be negative 8 plus 8 I root 3 well everybody it was a fantastic year I hope you enjoyed the videos and they weren't too hurtful and this is gonna be your assignment for the last time so I hope you all have a wonderful day